Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good day. Good Sunday. And welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad to have you guys here. Today's Sunday, the 6th, December 2020. Welcome to the show. Now, guys, listen. We're headed for a monster of a disaster. But not right away. We're going to have a little recovery this summer going into this fall. But we're heading toward a monster of a disaster. And I'm going to tell you the reason why. Our monetary system is corrupted. Our money itself, worldwide, is corrupted. And this is the only reason Bitcoin is becoming an asset class. <laughs> Seriously, it's becoming the safe place, the only safe place in the world to put money. Really, uh, that that can be money like they money like modern money, money that modern money moves over the internet. And you know, I love gold and everything, but gold doesn't move over the internet. You know, and gold is a safe place to put your money, but they can confiscate it. It's real. It's in the real world. It's it's it can't move over the internet freely. There's an awful lot of things, drawbacks to gold, the reasons, and the people out there. Now, I didn't mean to get into a Bitcoin talk. The talk I'm talking about right now is the disaster we're headed toward, really fast, because there's a problem with the money. Money runs everything in the system, and the real crisis. The real crisis, the big crisis, the biggest crisis in the history of mankind ever is coming. It's so dark, it's so dire, I can't begin to express to you guys how bad it is. And it's because of the problem with the money worldwide. It's because of fiat currencies are not backed by anything. And it's because it's a Ponzi scheme. And Ponzi schemes all end. And this one's going to end worldwide simultaneously at the same time. And the real problem that we're facing is something called a wealth transfer. Everything out there is priced in the local currency, the local fiat currency, which is backed by nothing. It's the strangest situation. I, can't, I cannot believe this situation. It's, it's almost unbelievable. How do we get into this situation? But I'll explain to you guys with a little uh, example of what this situation's like. If a family drove up to a service station, say there's a husband and a wife and their kids, you know, and he told them, I got to go to the restroom, pump the gas for me. And he pulled into the gas pump, you know. And there was one nozzle, there's a red nozzle, and there's one nozzle, there's a yellow nozzle. Okay, he wants them to put in the yellow nozzle because he's got a diesel car. Okay, but the kids don't know. They grab the red nozzle, which is regular gasoline, and they pump his tank full of regular gasoline. And they put the nozzle back and everything. He goes in, he pays, and everything. He comes out and gets in the car. So he starts driving down the road. And he doesn't know that he hasn't got a tank full of diesel. He's got a tank full of regular gasoline. And that regular gasoline is making its way through the fuel pumps and everything and through the fuel lines toward the engine. He's only going to make it, let's just say, he makes it a half a mile down the road. And all of a sudden, everything just locks up. Pow. They're not going anywhere. This is the way with our financial system. I know that there is gasoline in the gas tank and it's a diesel car right now. That's what our whole world is like, our financial system. And it's going to lock up. It's going to lock up, guys. The whole financial system is going to lock up and then there's going to be a massive worldwide wealth transfer over into hard, tangible assets. But you just can't take the entire world's financial system and transfer all of that wealth out of people who's holding dollars, you know, big corporations and everything. They're all into the dollar. They don't see this coming. But to me, this is a no-brainer. 
This has to happen. Math, di math dictates that this has to happen. And, you know, we've pushed it off. It really started to happen back in 2008. And we pushed it off all these years. I mean, some kids were born and they've grown up since this happened in 2008. And they're getting to be big kids in the amount of time that they've been able to push this off. But they can only push this off so far because it's gone exponential. And it's a corrupted monetary supply worldwide. And there's no way out. Because at this point, uh, the way out to try to back out and try to pay off the debt and try to... They tried that. That's what quantitative tightening was all about. And it was a complete failure. Complete and utter failure. Now they can't back off the pedal the least little bit. And so, yes, we're heading toward a little bit of an economic recovery when the virus starts to go away, you know, and, uh, and all this new social programs get put in place and everything. Later this, this year coming, you know, and, and they prop up everything with new freshly printed money. Uh, things are going to start to move again. You know, uh, all these closed restaurants and everything, you know, uh, they got a sign on the window, uh, and, and it says that the, 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 this place is for lease now because they've closed the restaurant down, you know, and now they're going to lease it out. Some new guy will come along this summer. And say, hey, you know, this is a real opportunity. Uh, all the restaurants now in this area have closed, and people really need a restaurant here. And he's going to want to go in, and he's going to want to get a loan from the bank, you know. And things will start to open up and start to go again. Um, I'm going to tell you, once this black cloud's moved away, this virus thing, you know, somewhat. It doesn't have to completely move away, but moves away somewhat where people feel more comfortable again. Maybe they had, uh, maybe, maybe the vaccines come along or whatever, and people starting to feel more comfortable again about going out and going out to eat and stuff like that. New restaurants will be opening up. Money will be starting to flow back into the system, and l banks will start making loans out again. And pay and say, well, we, well, you know, the kitchen in that restaurant, we're going to change everything. Now that we're opening up this new restaurant, we need a big loan from the bank. We need $250,000 to just on the kitchen alone for renovation. So they go out and hire a, re a renovation co contractor. And he comes in and he hires people because more people are needed. Now there's new jobs going in and everything. So the economy starts to buzz along. And, and a lot of the people that don't have support right now, these new social programs will come along and they'll give them support. So next summer we're looking at a, a, a little bit of an economic not really a boom, but a kind of like a, a pickup from what it is, from what it's going to be in the next couple months. I mean, things are going to be absolutely dead the next couple months. Next, so this is going to seem like a, a total recovery because of what we've been through. You know, when you've been through something this bad, then if it starts to pick up a little bit, you say, hey, this is better. You know, that's what's going to trigger the velocity of money to start to pick up. And, the, and, you know, the Fed guys, they already know this is coming. The Fed already knows this is coming. That's why they put that mandate in that says we are willing to accept an inflation rate higher than the 2% inflation target. That's why they said, because they already know it's coming. They're not even admitting the 2% right now. But when they do admit the 2%, and then they have to admit that it's higher than 2%. What do you think the inflation's going to look like? And, you know, this is not a phenomenon just in America. This phenomenon is worldwide. All the fiat currencies are affected by this. They're all going to go down together. In fact, they're going to go down quicker than the dollar. The dollar is going to be the last resort of a fiat currency that they all run into because, you know, they need dollars more than they need these other fiats. And, and, and you know, none of them are backed by anything. So there's going to be a massive movement worldwide into gold, silver, and cryptos. That's where money's going to go, the big money. And I think cryptos is going to take maybe even the lion's share of it in the cryptos. So, you know... People who are buying in the gold, silver, and cryptos right now, you're actually on the base floor. But, you know, in the next couple months, we could have a little bit of a rocky road because things are actually going downhill right now. 
you know. So we move into this next summer, into this period of where things are picking up a little bit. The velocity of money is going to start to pick up, and inflation is going to start to run away, and that's when confidence is going to start to be lost in these fiat currencies. And a massive movement into these alternatives to fiat. And as that movement picks up speed and picks up momentum, fiat's going to start to lose even more. It's This is the end of, of fiat currencies. And the governments are going to try to transition into these new central bank digital currencies. It's only going to speed things up, guys. It's only going to speed things up. So this is how it's going to go, guys. The start of this next year is going to be a terrible start. It's going to be horrible. January and February is going to be horrible. But as the year progresses, we're going to start the year bad. And the end of the year is going to turn out good. Going to have, Not this Christmas. This Christmas is going to be a horrible Christmas. But next Christmas is going to be a really wonderful Christmas. Everybody's going to really enjoy themselves and moving into the new year. And so 2022 is going to start out great. So this year started out bad and ended up good. 2022 is going to start out great. And it's going to go downhill from there because we're going to go headfirst into inflation worldwide. And a wealth transfer. And, you know, I figure this wealth transfer is going to take about six months. Probably going to start around the middle of 2022. And it's going to move quickly once it really gets going. It's going to pick up energy. Pick up speed. And by the end of 2022, it's going to be a total disaster because the wealth transfer will have happened. And this is the way I see it. Maybe it'll take a little bit longer. I don't know for the wealth transfer to come. Or maybe it'll even be quicker than I'm, I'm thinking. But I'm thinking it'll take about six months. And you just can't transfer all of that wealth over from one set of hands to another set of hands without having major disruption. And so the problem is going to be with the major disruptions that take place from the wealth transfer. And, oh, yeah, there's going to be people out there who are really happy. The people who have silver, gold, and cryptocurrencies. Oh, yeah, because they're going to be the recipients of the wealth. But what about all these other people who have lost everything? Because they, they stuck to the dollar to the bitter end. They stuck to the fiat currencies to the bitter end. And they didn't see this coming. Because I'm going to tell you what, when this wealth transfer really gets underway... You're not going to be able to get out. You're not going to be able to buy these asset classes. There's going to be shortages in all of them, and you're not going to be able to, able to obtain physical gold, physical silver. You're not going to be able to obtain them. Because the people that have them, if they're watching it going up every day, and I mean going up big time, and they know what's going on, they know the wealth transfer. Once the wealth transfer starts, once it really starts probably around the middle of 2022. The people who have gold, silver, and cryptos, they're going to know what's happening. Because every it's going to be a massive movement. Everybody's going to want to get out. And so if they're in regular fiat currencies, they're going to be begging you to sell if you've got real physical. But are you going to really think about it now? If, if every single day it's going up like 5%, <laughs> You know, and it's been doing that for like two weeks, and there's no end in sight. Every, it's all the buzzword. Everybody wants it. Are you going to let go of it for for the fiat that he's trapped in? Because he's on the elevator going down, and you're on the elevator going up. And if he gives you what he's got on the elevator going down, then you're going to just step off the elevator that's going up, and you're going to be going on the elevator that's going down like him. I'm going to tell you, it works the same way with food, guys. We could have some shortages of things coming up in January and February. Uh, it could get rather serious. Half of your grocery store could be emptied out of a lot of items. And the United States could really look like Venezuela because this is a self-feeding cycle, too. When people see the grocery stores starting to go empty, then they go in and hoard more. And, you know, the people out there have more money than the grocery stores have food. And when they get scared, 
and they see the shelves starting to be emptied, then all these people who have been sitting on the sidelines and not hoarding start to come in and hoard, and it's hard to stop them. Grocery store says, okay, okay, look, they're cleaning out our shelves, cleaning out our aisles. They're taking everything, right? we got to do something about this. Put in an order that they're only allowed two items per person or whatever, you know? And, and, but they, they'll go, they'll go across town. And they'll go to five different grocery stores to get what they want. Because they're scared. They, they, and as those grocery stores start to put in restrictions, well, the people will just want to hoard even more. And it's hard to stop them once they really get going. And this is what, this is what creates the shortages. Is because we can't see right now. We can't see in the warehouses right now how much food they got left. We don't know. And, you know, it might be getting pretty slim because they have went through and, you know, they've lost a lot of food this year. Food production's off, off big time. You know, migrant workers are having a hard time. Uh, they're getting sick. And and when one of them or two of them might get test positive and they get sick, then they clean out the whole field and they say, okay, nobody in here, nobody in this farm anymore. When the farmer says, hey, what am I going to do? All, all of my, uh, say he's raising tomatoes, they're all going to rot in the vine. They say, well, that's not our fault. You should have been more careful. You should have used social distancing better on your farm. We're, we're going to have to close this farm down. I'm sorry, uh, but send all your employees home uh, for the next uh, two-week quarantine. And, and well, my, By that time, all my tomatoes will be rot. Well, so what? And this is how it goes. Then they got to deal with all these other things, like these different types of diseases that are in 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 the in the chickens now. The diseases, uh, the, the these uh, flus are in the chickens. They're in the uh, pork industry, you know. Uh, and I'm going to tell you guys something else. One thing, and this tells me that we're in trouble. I've been living at this location here for over thirty years. And every year it's the same thing. Halloween comes. And just after Halloween, we start getting hard frosts. We start to freeze the ground up. Very shortly thereafter. Generally, we get a snow or whatever. You know? Halloween was ages ago. Nothing. Every year it's the same thing. The weather patterns are very, very specific. They always bring yield the same thing year after year. And I always see the, the, the hard, icy stuff, you know. Like if I got a wheelbarrow out in the yard, it's half full of water, you know. And Halloween time, there's always a glaze of ice over top of the water, just after Halloween. Every single year for 30 years, it's been that way. Right now, I can go out there, and that water is just as the wateriest water as the water can be. There's not even ice close to forming on it. Something's wrong, guys. Something's seriously wrong. And it's just this year. This is the first year. And all these years, 30 years. Why? Every year, it's the same thing. Not this year. This year's different. Something's screwed up. Something's screwed up big time. And, and for me, it's seeing this happen. And this late right now, and there's no ice on the water. It's like, what in the heck's going on? Seriously, guys, what in the heck's going on? This year started out bad, but the weather's starting to go nuts. Look at all these hurricanes we had. I, I never seen anything like it before. Category fives and everything hitting Mexico and, and, and the poor people down in Louisiana. Boom, 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 boom. One hurricane after another. Something, something's up. We're, we're under some sort of a, a, you know, in the old days, you know, back like they, they would say, burn the witch, burn the witch. You know, they would be all upset. They'd say, something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong with the world. You know, and they would all go out witch hunting. But nowadays, we're, we're like modern people. We don't think that way anymore, you know. Uh, we're not superstitious or anything. But this is getting a little bit scary about what's going on. Things are not quite normal. Things are weird right now. And I'm hoping things will straighten out next year, you know. I'm hoping things doesn't get worse for something else come along that will blindside us that we don't see coming. 
That's what I'm hoping for, that, that my prediction of for next summer for a little bit of a recovery will come true. And, and something else won't come along out of nowhere. These are what they call black swan events. Now, I saw this last one coming ahead of anybody else, you know. I did shows, like one of the shows was called The Train Wreck. I said, it's going to be a train wreck. I said, the economy and the, the, the virus are coming. And they're going to collide on the tracks and we're going to have a train wreck. Well, we had that train wreck now. And I predicted it way ahead of anybody else. Just exactly what would happen. And I was right on the money. Now, I'm telling you guys, I'm right on the money this time when I'm telling you that, that this economic recovery we got coming, and it's not going to be a full-blown economic recovery, but it's going to be better than what we got now, is going to lead to something greater because we got this big problem in the money supply, and there's no resolving it. This is going to be a train wreck, bigger than the train wreck we just had. But it's it's gonna it's gonna be a ways out. It's into it's into 2022 that I see this coming. And in between now and then, we're gonna have a little bit of a rest. I think from it all, we're gonna have a little bit of a recovery where we're gonna have feel good out there and things are gonna look good. Don't let it fool you. Uh, stay tuned to my channel, and I'm gonna try to stay on top of it. When we're in this next economic recovery, probably around next summer, I'll be able to see a lot better just exactly how this is going to play out. And this is what you really need to prepare for because the disruption that's going to come from the monetary system basically having this monstrous wealth transfer is going to be uh, worse than what we've been through. And you need to prepare for it. You really need to prepare for it because if you don't, well, heck, I'm just going to say it. You just might not have nothing to eat if you don't prepare for that. And the time to prepare, I'm going to be on top of it here. I'm going to try to see it coming a little, head, a little bit ahead time, maybe give you guys three to six months preparation time when it finally does get here. Like, as we get closer, I'm going to be able to see the timing of it better. Right now, it's a bit too far away. It's like way into 2022, you know? And uh, so, anyway, listen, guys, have a great rest of the weekend. And just think about this economic recovery we got coming this summer and how good that's going to feel when the money starts to move again and the velocity of money starts to pick up. People start to get money in their pockets again. And and uh, just think how good that's going to feel. But it's leading to something bigger later. Okay, we'll catch you guys in the next show. and You guys have a great rest of the weekend, and we'll see you guys on Monday with a market report. Bye-bye, guys.